Hello, and welcome to this installment of our virtual conference series with a focus on freight, transportation, and logistics. I'm Greg Pendy, a member of the SPAC and Disruptive Technology Equity Research Team at Chardin Capital Markets. As always, I'll start the call on an interesting note with some important disclosures. During this call, we will not be discussing Chardin research. Any discussions about research should be coordinated between a particip participant and their respective salesperson. Our compliance team has asked me to read this statement for the investor call. By participating in this call, our speakers attest that they have made Chardin aware of any potential conflicts, and they will not discuss any material, non-public, confidential information that they are aware of that may breach their legal, regulatory, or fiduciary responsibility to any parties. So with that out of the way, it's my pleasure to introduce Ami Daniel, the CEO of Winward. Ami? Thank you for joining Hello. us today. Hello, Greg. Thank you for having me. I hope you're having a great day. Yeah, so far, so good. Um, so, you know, let's get started um, with, uh, you know, just some bigger picture stuff. And then later uh, we'll go into uh, more company specific. But, you know, could you help us understand your AI platform and um, just how your solution is, you know, disrupting what people are traditionally uh, have been using in the maritime space? Sure, I have to say, um, uh, I've been, I was 40 in Gen. Uh, and I used to say the word disrupting a lot. And I, I don't like that word anymore because I think this space, um, which is basically moving you know, trillions a year, 90% of global trade, is filled up with a lot of experts. And these experts actually really know what they're doing. Um, so I think I prefer the word augmenting I prefer the word improving. I prefer the, prefer the word accelerating than disrupting. Is that okay as a, as a first comment? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we've seen some people also, uh, uh, some of your peers also kind of give an evolution versus that word. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't want to, if you talk about the hype cycle of Gartner, I don't want to get to the, the trope of disappointment. But 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 anyway, um, back to your question. Um, Woodward is, is the maritime AI company. What we do is we support 200 plus blue chip customers on taking decisions every day in terms of moving their cargoes, um, hiring vessels, planning their supply chains, or guarding their ports and, and, and their countries. Um, and and let's, th let's take one example or a few examples from, from the news because I think it's, it's always you know, more interesting. So this is April 16. In the past couple of weeks, the following things happened. Number one, MSC Aries, um, a very big vessel, 14,000 boxes, was hijacked by the Iranian um, uh, guard, Revolutionary Guard, uh, just off Fujairah. 14,000 containers. Is that a supply chain problem for forwarders? Yes. Is that a problem for cargo owners? Yes. Is that a car problem or does that change anything for BP or Shell or any one of the traders who are considering to go through the Straits of Ramuz? Probably yes. Is it, a, is it something that... that uh, troubles the legal officers and the compliance people who are doing risk management on a daily basis around the world. Well, yes. Do our governments uh, deal with this? Well, I think so. The U.S. You know, U.S. Navy has been doing a spectacular job around the world and protecting world trade. So that's a very good example just for the last week about how all of these customers, which I mentioned, which are all users of our platform, are all influenced by world events and are turning to our platform to take better decisions as things go along, and I can be very specific in how we can help them plan better. Great. Um, so then just a, as you talk about, you know, this space, I know that the numbers, the TAMs are, are very large, but can you just talk about this in terms of, you know, uh, dollar value opportunity? Sure. Can, can we just take a step back and talk about what, what's TAM? I think, you know, there's TAM, there's SAM, there's SOM, there's TOM, there are all kinds of numbers. Let me try and simplify that. If that's okay? Is that okay? Absolutely. So, so I think of TAM as a CEO, as co-founder, I think as a TAM in the following way. Number of customers times numbers of products times price of every product. So I think one of the challenges are that if you go after a huge TAM, you're dropping the ocean. And you need to drop so much money to stand out, just so much money. In today's days and age, not all investors are very happy to finance tens of millions of marketing spend. Um, so actually, I look at it in, in, in a bit of a different way. Winward is trying to fill up, and we have, a, a, I think, a successful history 
of building more and more products, which increase our TAM. So it's more of a niches that we add to our product to make it more compelling to a bigger amount of people. So I think we think of it the following way. You can go deeper and you can go wider. You can go deeper by improving your product. You don't just do risk for due diligence. You also do risk for containers. You don't just do risk for containers. You do risk for fishing. That's, that's going deeper. And I think so we're, we're, we're doing that. And I think that's where you know, we finished 23 and 34 and a half million of ACV, which is our equivalent of ARR and up 35% from the previous year. And probably the cusp of profitability this year is, is our forecast look right now. Um, uh, however, I think we have 200 plus customers out of, you know, who knows, a quarter million. <laughs> so it's a lot of people. Um, and, and I think also when you talk about the market, I think people don't necessarily understand what, what's the market. So we serve public sector, we serve traditional what's called maritime, which is traders, charters, maritime companies, ship management, and we serve logistics service providers. Most bankers would look at these as three different markets and would have three different analysts doing that. I don't actually. Because, and, and, and coming back to my emissaries example, I think they're all the same market consumed by different personas. And if you can build a platform that can cater to these different workflows, we need to talk about generative and how that flows in. I think it's, it's really interesting. I think you can have a tremendous advantage in scale, in quality, in, in cross correlating their needs and that information. So to, to your point, I don't really want to quantify them. In, in the Pathfinder document, when we went public in, in the UK, we quantified that and that was audited and so forth to 10 billion. Since then, we built you know, two or three more new products and there are more coming. So if you think about the TAM as times of customers, times, times of products, time price, you know, I don't know if it's 15 billion or 20 billion, but for a $35 million company, it's definitely a lot to go after. Understood. Okay, that's helpful. And then just can you uh, describe, you know, the global landscape and what you identify as some of the global mega trends that will help shape your industry over the next few years and how you've positioned Windward to benefit from these trends? Sure. First of all, I gotta say again, let's 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 be humble. Um, you know, I met one of my customers last week, and he told me, "I mean, you know what? If McKinsey five years ago would come out of that door and ask me for half a million bucks, and would give me a report saying we'll have a global pandemic, we'll have a Red Sea disruption, we'll have a war in Ukraine and Russia, we'll have a ship coming and going to Baltimore, we'll have hijackings of Iran, and Israel is going to be attacked with ballistic missiles," I would never have believed him. So I think we need to be humble as founders and CEOs. I think tech is moving super fast. I think the world is moving super fast. Geopolitics are moving super fast. And the best thing I can tell you is I actually think five-year business plans are irrelevant anymore. So, so I think we all need to, to adopt beginner's mind and run our business on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis. Having said that, here are the main drivers that drive the demand for our business. Number one is geopolitical tensions. So I think we're seeing an unraveling of the post-1945 world order. Um, and I think it's growing by the day. I've been saying this every other week, basically, in the last few months. And unfortunately, it's been, it's been proven to be more and more right. Um, probably that started by Russia invading Ukraine. Uh, in my view, that's the genesis of that two years ago and has kind of evolved since. Obviously, October 7th, and now ballistic missiles and the Red Sea. And these things we've never seen for. for Maybe not never, but for decades of years, we haven't seen them. So number one, that's a big driver because that drives a lot of regulation and where the world leader in maritime compliance. So if you're anybody who's moving cargoes, you know, oil cargoes, dry bulk cargoes, your number one option in the world, by the way, also the most expensive. And the only company that does this with it is us. And the reason is we're going to help you do more business, not less business. And stay compliant with everything that's changing. So that's one driver. The second driver is supply chain pressures. Um, obviously, it's not anything that's it's like COVID yet, but you had just in the last month, a vessel, you know, run into a port of um, uh, a bridge in Baltimore, a very tragic event with a tragic loss of life, um, but closed the port of Baltimore. You had the Red Sea disruptions. You had uh, uh, an earthquake in Taiwan, which is a big semiconductor manufacturing place. Um, and you had embassy areas uh, get hijacked by Iran. And I think that, that influenced that even more. Um, so, so, so I think supply chain pressures are a driver. Decarbonization is a driver. I think we've been talking a lot of, a long, for a long while on that. We finally have customers actually paying us money 
to help them do their scope three emissions right analysis. I think it's, I'm happy to see it happening. I think it's one been on the cards for a while. And I think finally AI and specifically Gen AI really is a big driver. We need to talk kind of unpack that a bit because I think a lot of people are very cynical about Gen AI. I gotta say I'm not. You know, I'm spending about half of my time with customers on that. And I think I think if you understand that properly, it can transform your business. Right. Well, that's very helpful. Let's dig into some more co some company specific uh, questions about Windward. Can you just go over from a technology platform perspective um, for those looking at the company? Um, you know, can you walk us through aspects of how your of of your maritime AI platform, and then also any uh, notable key patents or pending patents? Sure. Um, so first of all. Uh, we believe in patents. So we have six patents uh, granted and 13 more pending um, because I think if you want to build defensibility, that's part of what you need to do. Um, we, we basically have a platform that takes uh, data globally on from dozens of sources and first of all, cleans the data with algorithms, but also curates data. I think it's a really important point. Um, and I think Russia's invasion to, to Ukraine, I think really was was an eye-opener for me as well. Um, you know, there are dozens of new companies being opened every day by Russians to trade oil. Uh, and you just, even the best algorithms in the world need somebody to do it. So, so I think part one is cleaning the data with, with a lot of AI, but also curating the data with a back office, which I'm, you know, I think it's, I think it's just part of what you need to do. Um, we didn't create that, take that raw data and build entities, vessels, companies, ports, and cargoes enrich them with different sources like imagery and radar frequency satellites, basically everything out there that's looking at ships. And then we transform that and allow customers to have the only product in the world which is configurable. So I think, I ask my customers, my prospects one question, are you unique or are you like everybody else? If you are like everybody else, that's very good. I'm not sure you're for me. Uh, if you think you're special and your business is special and you have a way to make money which is different, and you probably want to have a view, your configurable view of risk, your supply chain risk, your compliance risk, your security risk, your trading risk. And we will enable you, and the only product in the world which will enable you, to configure exactly your platform to exactly what you need yourself in a click of a button. You're, it's not going to take six months. It's not going to take 12 months. It's tech. Um, and, and therefore, the outcomes of what you'll get in our platform are different. And every customer gets it different. And every night that's getting recalculated. And that already bakes into that about 15 AI models from prediction of arrivals of vessels and prediction of arrivals of containers to exceptions and critical events to stitching out different uh, data patterns with ML uh, to deep learning models who, who analyze when vessels are doing a ship to ship transfer in the middle of the sea and what are they transferring and how people are spoofing. So I think there are all kinds of these sub problems which you need to get right I think AI is a great tool to get it right. However, AI is a tool, it's not a goal in and of itself. And, and I think we're very keen on that and we're very clear on that. It all goes from the, it's the Amazon way of building products. Write the press release first, even if you don't have one line of code with the customer. And then we'll work back from that to what they need versus working forward from what tech you can build to what the customer can do with it. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. That's that's really helpful. And then, you know, you guys have a very impressive list of, of customers, some pretty big brand names. And through the you mentioned the three parts, the government, uh, trading and shipping, and then the supply chain. Can you just sure. walk us through maybe any notables so that uh, uh, we can better understand uh, the company, any notable clients and kind of how they're using you? Sure, of course. Um, so we support companies like BP, Shell, and Exxon, um, Glencore, um, BHP built and, and, and many others, the biggest integrated both dry bulk and oil companies in the world. Um, and we, we support them with due diligence and compliance. Basically, um, Russia has become the most sanctioned company on earth, and Iran is also pretty sanctioned. My, you know, I think, think I can formally predict now it's going to be more sanctioned in the coming weeks uh, due to, to this week's events and, and the attack in Israel. Uh, I think at least that's, I think, the direction of travel that they, they, both the UK and the US are signaling. And there's the, the shipping space was never really regulated until May 2020. 
and specifically actually in 2022 it got really got enforced enforced so so we've been we've been there and worked with the regulators and uh, there's something that's called quote unquote deceptive shipping practices which means how do these how do ships hide the fact that they're trading with sanctioned oil or sanctioned products and so forth and how they just hide that and I think it's been covered extensively by now by the New York Times and Washington Post and you know other mainstream media partially with our data so we support these traders first of all the trading side and deciding can I do business with this counterpart if the get if the answer is yes no problem green move on make money but if the answer is maybe i.e yellow or amber or red it gets escalated to legal and compliance which are like power users of our platforms so the value is stay compliant, but make more money using AI. So clear more business, not less business, uh, versus with, with crude, crude uh, um, uh, combs, if you will. You're using a very fine comb. So that's a very good example uh, of things that already are happening. On logistics, we have customers like Scan Global, which we're very proud of. It's, a, I think, a, a medium-sized forwarder based in Denmark, which is using our products to track their containers. Um, more importantly, though, uh, they're providing better customer service by telling them where the containers are and when they will arrive using AI, but also they're using exception management because they want to make sure that their operators from 300,000 boxes know what to deal with first, first. Which are the containers which are going to miss, you know, change, have a change in port of destination need to be dealt with because you need to rebook the haulage. Where is the transshipment port change and when is the ETA going to change? Where does, what disruption your customer has in their supply chain so you need to use air freight. So, so I think that's part of it. And they also embed it in their customer portal to make sure the customers have a more, a better experience in engaging with these containers. And I think I, I call this the Amazon effect. You know, when you book something on Amazon, my kids even know where's the delivery guy? Where's the delivery guy? Where's the delivery guy? On B2B, you don't even know where the box is and when it's arriving. It doesn't make sense. But when you ship, ship something that's worth a million bucks, you don't know where that is. But when you buy, you know, toothpaste, you do. So it's bridging the gap between the consumerism kind of experience, consumer experience in Amazon and a B2B experience. Are these two examples helpful to, to simplify that? It's very helpful. I think it's something that we're hearing as, as, as a theme that for you know people who are familiar with Amazon just aren't aware um, that the, you know, the, the opaqueness of delivery um, in, in your yeah. space. And, yeah. and with that being said, you know, you're, you're dealing with very um, sensitive um, data from customers. So how are you building trust and in, in, in security um, as, as they're moving you know, their goods across and you're dealing with this type of information? Yeah, it's a very good question. First of all, I gotta say, we don't get a lot of private data from customers. We might get further down the road in future products. We don't yet get. So most of our products are public and commercial. Um, I think customers, even with containers, where they provide us containers, numbers of bills of lading, that's not considered to be sensitive information use that as a key to query the rail data or the carrier data um, to combine that with the ship movement data, which you already have. Having said that, privacy and security is very important. We have a bunch of ISOs, uh, which we get tested on every year, um, which I think we, do, we, we, we invest a lot in that. We invest a lot in cybersecurity and protection. Um, we're on the Amazon marketplace. And when you go in and be an Amazon Marketplace partner, you actually have to go through different verification and standards to make sure you meet that, um, you meet these requirements of privacy and security. Um, having said that, maybe in the future, if we'll get more customer data, I'm sure we'll be investing more in securing that because you know, leaks is not something anybody wants to see. But right now, we don't get that type of data. Great. And then um, just as we think about your underlying business model, you know, what are the key KPIs that investors should be focused on, focusing on when evaluating performance? Yeah, I think it's very simple. We're very transparent. And, and I think there's, be, there's going to be a link to this, uh, to this uh, conversation with, with our presentation. Our leading metric is called ACV. It's annual contract value. It's like ARR. It's the same. That's a leading indicator to, to the revenue um, for next year. Uh, I think we've we've seen last year 35% growth in ACV. I think traditionally we're showing that revenue the following year grows uh, beyond the ACV line of the previous year. So I think it's a good it's a good leading indicator, uh, and I think that's the most important one. Um, uh, secondly, is EBITDA uh, and how much we lose. Uh, we are committed to finishing 
2024 on a on a break even basis in Q4. Uh, we'll do our best to do that uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and I think these are two leading metrics. Margin is something we track. We saw in 23 an increase from 72 percent margin to 79.4 percent margin. I think it's very important to have a healthy business where as you grow, your margin grows. And actually in the investor presentation, uh, which will be attached to this conversation, you can see a long-term analysis of our business model. And in fact, we, we envisage about 18% EBITDA uh, on an ongoing basis in the long term. So, so I think these are the most important metrics. We also share the customer account. And you'll see we, we, we uh, uh, broke through the 200 customer line and most of them are blue chips. So all this is very much available. Right. Um, very helpful. And then we'll we'll just uh, go with one final one. You know how um, how should investors think about you know strategic alliances or acquisitions in, in your space? Any thoughts uh, on that that are noteworthy? Yeah. yeah, of course. I think first of all, there's a bunch of moves that have been done. Uh, and I think we're keenly aware of that. Um, uh, I think the in, in our small space, I think there is a bunch of PEs and back. Or what they believe is winners uh, were public. Uh, I believe the maritime space has will have five, six, seven companies in different areas. It's not really one market. It's really like different markets will be the winners. I think we have a very good shot at being one of these winners. Uh, it's a very small space. The biggest companies in space do like 140 million of, of revenue, like the biggest one, and between it's like 100 million. So, so it's really it's really not huge yet. But I think it's just a matter of the product innovation. In my view, Gen AI will allow and is allowing for the next level of product innovation to break that glass ceiling. So, so I think investors should think about who are you backing and what's their vision? What are they trying to achieve beyond their numbers? What we're trying to achieve is we believe we're building a platform that accelerates global trade. We believe we have the data set and the customer base and the, and the momentum to build a very big company, to grow across and help and support customers across, every, across everything that floats and everything that's created on the ocean, but not exclusively on the ocean, also goes into rail and trucking. Now, in terms of alliances, I don't think you need to buy stuff to grow. I think you can buy stuff to grow, but more often than not, sometimes it just slows you down. The integration, the culture, and so forth. I think we have, if you have ample opportunity to grow organically 30, 40, 50%, I think personally, I think paying top dollars for, for buying something might slow you down. Um, having said that, we have a strategic partnership with Long Stock Exchange Group, for instance, where we buy the world check on data and provide it to our customers integrated on the one hand. And on the other hand, they distribute and share with customers our data uh, into Icon or Workspace and perhaps soon to be other platforms. So maybe that's my wrap up of the space. Great, no, that's very helpful. Um, I think that, you know, that brings us to an end. Um, you know, we'll note that investors, there will be a link to their um, investor deck for those who want to dig uh, if, dig through that. And I want to thank Omni for, you know, taking the time to share the story with Winwood for us. It was very helpful. Pleasure. It's always uh, good talking to you and uh, best regards from London. Thanks.